Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm doing a few gardening tasks. Uh, last week, I put up a video on how to expand a garden bed or how to uh, make a garden bed. Uh, and on the top part of this lawn uh, in the uh, back garden space, I cut into that, um, made a fresh edge, and uh, actually did some tilling up there because there's some zoysia grass that I needed to get out. Uh, I needed to do the same thing on this side of the turf as well. So I put the drone up just to take a look at it and I used some um, yellow upside down paint and uh, painted some lines. And then uh, again, did the same operation that I did up there, less the tiller. Um, I edged it, um, took out the grass and uh, then put in a nice edge. You can see up toward the top of the turf up there, there's kind of a flat spot. You know, it looked it looked okay the other day when I was when I put that video up. But when it, when the drone goes up, I can see that there's a flat spot, and I like just slow, easy curves. And so I got a little bit of work to do on that curve uh, up at the top. There were three containers in a space over here to my left or your right um, that I took out. They're rectangular containers, and they're going to be blocked now by some other things I have going on. And I'm going to transplant a Wajila into that space now. This is the space these three rectangular containers were. They were just gonna get blocked out. They'd already been blocked out kind of by this garlic and this garlic will go away and you know, a few months it'll die back and it'll be ready to uh, harvest. Other things will go in there at that point. Um, I'm about to crowd it a bit with this uh, Wajila, but I got this gold foliage Wajila that I've got to move over here. It doesn't have a big root system on it. It was a fairly new uh, plant. There's a few roots in here that grown under these containers really quickly. Um, I know there's not a lot of roots on that thing because I moved it not that long ago, but I'm gonna go ahead and prepare a bit of a hole because it will be a disturbed root system when I bring it over here. I don't wanna get it over here and then move it four times and continue to knock soil off of it. So you can see I get down to this clay level pretty quickly, but you can see how improved the top layer is up on, on here as well. I think, so I think that's gonna be adequate. This why Gila is called Wajila Lumansi Aura, which just means gold. Uh, it'll actually get a little bit bigger than that space uh, over there, but I'll, I'll, I'll keep it smaller. A couple things, normally I would not transplant a plant that was in its you know, almost peak bloom. Uh, I probably will cost me some flowers here. The reason this is happening is because uh, you know I wanted to do it a couple weeks ago and I didn't get around to it. So I really wanted to do this before the flowers came, but I haven't had time to prep that, prep that area. So um, here we are. I had just, this is the second time it's being moved, so I know there's not many roots on it. It, it moved over here just to store it uh, temporarily, so I'm just pushing that mulch back, going along the side, and it's just gonna pop right out. I already know that, because it hasn't had time to actually root into this area very much at all. Normally what I do when I'm transplanting something is I'll bring a tarp over, and I'll, I'll put the plant onto a tarp and just slide it to where it goes. Uh, this has got such a small root system after being moved twice that I'm just going to pick it up on the shovel. You're going to see that now and walk it uh, over to where it goes. Once I get it where it's going, um, the depth of my hole seems fine. I want to leave it up just a bit. I'll get the best side facing uh, toward the uh, toward the turf and uh, and then backfill it. Um, the only tricky thing about transplanting a plant versus planting one out of a container is a little harder to get the roots, I mean the soil packed in around the roots because the roots are going in all directions. It doesn't give you kind of a uniform shape. So kind of more important to water when you transplant something just to get soil settled around it and uh, Make sure you're getting the air pockets out. Not, you know, we're not trying to stomp the air out of it. You know, plants need air around their roots. I'm just saying that you don't want large voids around it. Once it's tamped down, watered in a couple times, I'll come back in and mulch around it. And uh, I want to make sure it's up just a bit. And you can see under there, it's elevated just a hair. I mean, you can. It's probably hard to see, but I'll, I'll put my finger down here. It's elevated about an inch and a half above the grade here. That gives me enough room for my mulch without, uh, without burying the plant. As you guys know, this landscape is uh, mostly drifts of one, meaning that it's a lot of one of a kinds because I like lots of different plants. Don't want to limit myself 
to, you know, just a few things uh, in the landscape. Other people landscape differently, but this is how I like to do it. If there's a few things in the landscape that have three or five or, you know, as many as seven, but most of it's in ones. And you find when you landscape this way that you are going to have to move something occasionally. Uh, this, um, actually this Wajila, the first time it was moved was because it wasn't getting quite enough, uh, quite enough light. Uh, it, it needs part shade, otherwise it burns in the uh, sun. So this is, it's in a good spot now, but it was in too much shade. Uh, before and that was the reason it was stretching as you can see what's interesting here is it's next to another wajila called shining sensation and normally i wouldn't park two of the exact same uh plants next to one another because i like to have the leaf shape different something needs to be different and in this case we have the uh, foliage color so that dark foliage of the one wajilia well, wajila versus this one look they look great together they contrast well together but they're kind of the same at the same time. This year in the back garden space, I used wood chips for the uh, path. Now that I've extended the lawn here a foot and a half or two feet, I've got to come back in here and uh, uh, extend the uh, wood chips out for the path, have the path meet the turf. And see, so I'll, I'll just make a basic shape like that where the path flares in um, just a bit, just like that. But I'll go out to the driveway and get the uh, I've got a lot of wood chips available for this project. And then the area that was expanded along the back here, I've got a little more grass to get out of there. And in uh, the area over here will be uh, compost. Same thing uh, over here. I've got a compost, compost this area. I actually have a little more grass. I haven't gotten out of here yet. Um, and then this path, which comes in here, um, needs to uh, just to be extended out to the turf. One shrub transplanted, uh, the beds are wider, the turf is smaller, the paths are longer, uh, and I've got three containers here. I've got to figure out where they're going to uh, go in the landscape. I do, I do like these uh, uh, rectangles, but I will say, overall, rectangles and squares are harder to landscape with uh, than circles. Um, the, you know, they're great on steps and you know, angular places, but they're not the easiest thing to design with uh, in the landscape. I do have a hand truck that I frequently uh, will employ. I, I wouldn't put this, you know, I've done, I've done videos about uh, tools that I use in the landscape and I've never pointed out the fact that I have a hand truck. So uh, any container that's going from here to there, uh, it's happening with a hand truck and uh, it make, makes, makes life much easier. Uh, definitely uh, easier on the back. I picked the small one up and the, and the medium one, that larger one, hand truck every time. So I think this looks uh, pretty, pretty good in the Swiss chard, the pansies, uh, the garlic, uh, some other things in here that are uh, winter annuals uh, get to stay a little while longer and my summer annuals get to go in here next week. Um, but again, I'm waiting. There's a 39 degree night on the forecast for next week, so I'm waiting for that. And I think the overall shape of the lawn is actually better despite the fact it's actually going to become a patio uh, at, at some point. And this is the, I think, probably finished size uh, that the patio will be. Um, so, uh, and I think uh, Design-wise, I've got some ideas on something pretty clever. I've got some kind of antique-ish bricks uh, that are going to be used and some stone as well. So hopefully that'll be an interesting project when that one comes up. So thank you guys for following along with the channel and a ton of stuff going in the ground here 
in the next month. Thanks for watching.